one person whom I would like to thank profusely for my heart is Mr. Ranveer Kapoor, who has stood like a rock behind this book coming to this stage today. Thank you very much. Hi, good evening, uh, the Honorable Vice President, sir, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll make this very short. Uh, I was six years old when uh, my grandfather, Mr. Raj Kapoor, passed away. Everything I knew about him uh, in, through my growing years, uh, through my family members, was about him as a father, as a son, as a husband, as a grandfather. Through Ram and his brilliant book, I got an insight of him as a filmmaker. And being a student of cinema myself, I got to know Raj Kapoor, the filmmaker, the director, the actor, the artist that he was. And I'm eternally grateful to Uncle for his experience. Uh, thank you so much. I read the book uh, when Rahul Uncle emailed me the book. I read it in five hours flat because it was so entertaining. It was uh, so well written. I think he had such great insight about Raj Kapoor as a filmmaker. And I hope that all of you enjoy the book too. Thank you so much. I would now like to request Sri Ranveer Kapoorji to say a few words. So with your permission, I would like to sit and speak. I've had an accident and hurt myself. Your Excellency, the Vice President of India, Mr. Venkaiya Naidu, and distinguished guests, it's my privilege to be here in the presence of the Vice President of India who has graciously come to inaugurate my friend Rahul's book written about my father. The Vice President has not only been very gracious to my family and to all the Kapoor's by agreeing to come here, but he has also been gracious enough to honor the entire Indian film industry, which we all belong to. I'll make it short and request His Excellency to please release the book and do the honors. <laughs> I have said lots of things and everybody's heard uh, them. <laughs> Thank you. also a huge burden. Burden in a positive way. There's a huge sense of responsibility, a huge sense of accountability, and more importantly, a huge sense, as you mentioned in your opening remarks while the Vice President was here, that you're growing up into a family which has seen it all. So let's start with you, Ranveer. What did you feel when you read the book? And what do you feel today as you hold the mantle, uh, not just of RK Studios, but of a legacy? So like I was mentioning earlier, uh, you know, growing up in this family, I of course feel a huge sense of responsibility. Uh, I, I never felt any sense of pressure or, uh, you know, bogged down on my shoulders that, you know, the expectations of, of living up to this name, I felt like I had to really work hard to, uh, to sustain that. Uh, but having said that, uh, growing up, of course, we hear so many stories of, of Raj Kapoor, the filmmaker, you know, the, as, a, as a husband, as a father, and usually they are really stories of, of, of glory. You know, and I think what Rahul Angel has done is really uh, written a book and, and painted him here. You know, and I don't think I'll ever get a sense of Raj Kapoor uh, as, a, as a real person. You know, when somebody assists someone uh, uh, at work, you really get to know what that person uh, was and, and who he was. And I think Rahul Angel has really brought that sense out so beautifully 
Then I could win even as a film, you know. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you know, it, I, I read the entire book over one day. It was so engaging. Uh, you know, I learned so much of him as, as, as an artist, how he created those movies, how he spent time, uh, you know, the madness that you hear about. I think Rahul Uncle put it in perspective and put it very, very nicely. So I think that's something which, which really made me happy. Well, I also think that uh, Rahul is oh, it's very honest too. Uh, Raj Kapoor, for Raj Kapoor, cinema was the only thing. We didn't matter to him actually. <laughs> he only saw us grow. <laughs> and and uh, he did everything. Only for cinema. For him, it was cinema all the way. And he has put it up very well in this book. And uh, I hope he writes more about it. I'm, I'm sure he knows a lot more. No, so, when, kept it. No, so when you were growing up, you were obviously living in this shadow, first of Prithviraji, then, you know, Raj Kapoor. How were those growing up years? Because Rahul has managed to capture us very beautifully in anecdotal terms of the idiosyncrasies of the great man. But you as a son, you as family, what did you feel? That there were so many Kapoors, you know. At least two that you picked up, there was a Kapoor. Right? <laughs> <laughs> my uncles, maternal, paternal, <laughs> all my relatives. Everybody was in cinema. If you saw from my father's side, there was the great Shabi Kapoor, there was the great Shashi Kapoor. Premnath yeah. was my maternal uncle, then Rajendranath, and then Narendranath, and all the Naths followed uh, <laughs> Raj Kapoor and gave it. So there were so many of them. So you just glide along and try and, uh, try and be honest to your work. And try and be yourself, rather than be trying to be like everybody. Or try to be like Raj Kapoor, which is impossible. Raj Kapoor is a big Himalayan figure. Everybody cannot become Raj Kapoor, like every girl cannot become a Lama Baker. Or everybody who sings in the bathroom is not a Bhagavan Lakshmi like the joke was. Yeah. It's impossible to change the game. So it's also Raj Kapoor, very difficult. He said, hey, Raj Kapoor was better. You are not as good. He said, of course I am not as good. It's <laughs> <laughs> so easy to be a Raj Kapoor. I had 100,000 in India already. Let me, one of the hallmarks, and this is just off the track from the book, because I've spent many evenings at Ranveer's dad and mom's home with Dabu, at times Rahul, Kunal, all of them. Obviously, we don't drink and eat. It's just a very pleasurable evening without either of these two things. We never eat and we never drink. It's in the moon's face. Correct. It's all very interesting. We just have green tea or something like that and Murray biscuits. No, but on a serious note, when you grow up in this kind of an atmosphere where there is so much of friendship, so much of affection, so much of love, there is also commercial responsibility. I mean, I remember what you said in your book, when Bobby turned in a profit, Raj Kapoor actually turned the car around, went late at night outside his CFO's house and said, where the hell is Bobby ka profit come in? So, you know, when you, you guys were living like, as if, Everything mattered and then also nothing mattered. It was a very, no pun intended, very spiritual existence without the black label. <laughs> but the Raj Kapoor, uh, sorry, the black label would only come after you have done all the hard work. That's what Raj Kapoor taught us. That is why we are still working. <laughs> saying that the God lies in the script. And if the script is weak, demolish the script and reconstruct. I mean, so he believed in that. He was a formidable actor. Formidable. He was one of the finest friends man or woman or child could have. One of the finest human beings. But he was also a pain in the ass. In terms of a taskmaster. He was tough. How was it growing up as Chintu's son?
I think you, you kind of summed up uh, summed them up well. Uh, I was always petrified of him. I remember as a kid uh, at the dining table, if he just told me eat your vegetables, I used to just start crying. You know, my mother every year used to threaten me that you better do well at school, otherwise I'm going to show your report card to him. So he was a very strict man, but behind that he was a very passionate person. I think he was passionate about everything, about his wife, his family, his food, his alcohol, his movies. Uh, you know, he used to love playing bridge at night on the computer and even while playing he used to be listening to the radio and listening to old Hindi songs. He used to be playing the tabla on the table while hearing them. And you could see a sense of a very passionate, uh, talented man. Um, so yeah, I think my, uh, uh, my upbringing and the values that he instilled in me, apart from, uh, us, apart from the cinema values, I think what me and my sister are really proud of is, is, is all the moral values that he instilled in us. I think he was really a, truly a great father and uh, we miss him dearly. So it's interesting because, you know, when Ranveer just talked about values, you mentioned in great detail the kind of compassionate human being Raj Kapoorji was. The kind of affection he showered on people, the way he, he moved his life around, never let go of his friends, you know, including when, when you were casting for Love Story, he would give you advice on how to handle Rajinder Kumar, all of those things. So, when you were working with him, what were those, what were the value systems or the values that you saw come right through? When I was uh, working with him as assistant, uh, he was not compassionate. He used to scream, and we were terrified of him. Terrified because he would scream. But one realized that when he was screaming, it was all because you were not paying attention to your work. And if you paid attention to your work, there would be nobody better than him. I think he's the best teacher in the world anybody could ever have, and I was fortunate to have learned everything from him. That's brought me here today. And whatever I've learned is from him. I I did go through a bad patch in my life after he passed away. And when I started writing the book, things kept coming back to me. You know, I kept realizing who he is. And uh, now I think I'm ready to make a film if somebody decides to make a film. Because whatever I've learned from him, more of that has come back to me. And uh, his main motto, which even uh, when we were talking about, was never give up. You know, just go through it and accept it. And like you accept your success, accept your failures also. Don't disregard that. So coming to failures, and please feel free to jump in, Pranika, but I want to put this to Randhir because he was in the thick of things. Miranam Joker was a seminal work a work that Raj Kapoorji had invested everything in. He had invested money, time, passion, his heart, his soul, everything. When that didn't do well at the box office, obviously there were commercial repercussions. What was it like within the family? Did, were, were, those, were those levels of turbulence felt within the family, those repercussions? What was it at that point in time? No, he never brought his work home in that sense, he didn't let us know what he was going through. And my mother put up a great front. I still remember when Miranam Joker failed and we were under huge losses. My mother, like Raj Kapoor always, threw big grand parties for his birthday. She said, we must have a big party for you. And he said, no, we'll not have it this year because we are running down, our chips are running down. She said, no, I, I'll manage that. I'll bring it home from somewhere. And we must have a big party again. But the show must go on that way. You must be Raj Kapoor always. And it went in. But incidentally, Sohail, I'd like to share with you and my other esteemed guests this thing with this. Today, Miranam Joker is the biggest profit point in my organization. Yeah. And if Raj Kapoor is sitting somewhere around here, at Raul Revere's inauguration of his book, I'm sure he's somewhere sitting here and listening to this, he'd be very happy to know that that picture that made him cry so much and brought so many tears will bring tears of joy to him. It's a very big success today. I make most money out of Miranam Joker. 
the first choice of every distributor of mine is Menon and Joker. So it's like a cash cow for me. My distributor is sitting there and I'm sure he'll vouch for it. It's somewhere around here. Yeah. And I'm sure he'll vouch for that. Maybe the film came a bit too soon. People say that the picture was too long. It was about a minute or two minutes longer than Sangam. So Sangam would be a big, big, huge success. I don't think his length was the problem.